Hey there, I bet you don't have UDP flowing through your RDS environments. Today, I'm going to show you how to fix that. So what's the big deal about UDP? Why do you need to get it working in your RDS environments? Well, as you can see by this graphic, Microsoft prepared around the time they first introduced UDP as an RDP transport protocol. UDP allows a terminal server to transfer more data across the wire in all scenarios. It's especially helpful in lossy or high latency connections, you know the type your boss likes to make with a cell phone and laptop at the lake house. So for best user experience, you need to make sure it's set up correctly. Now if you aren't using a remote desktop gateway, you just need to make sure that TCP and UDP can flow freely over port 3389 from the client device to the terminal server. That said, you don't want to just hook your terminal servers up to the internet with port 3389 open. That's how the remote desktop protocol becomes the ransomware delivery protocol. By the way, I'm shamelessly stealing that line from my friend Sammy Laiho, who coined that term at TechMentor Redmond 2022. Anyway, you'll want to put your terminal servers behind a remote desktop gateway, so let me now talk about how you get UDP working properly with your remote desktop gateway. If you're a small to medium-sized shop, you probably only have one remote desktop gateway. That is to say, you're not running your RDS deployment in high availability mode. In that scenario, make sure you're allowing both TCP traffic over port 443 and UDP traffic over port 3391 to your remote desktop gateway through your firewall. Also, make sure that UDP transport is enabled on your gateway in the remote desktop gateway manager. Also, Make sure that the Windows firewall on the Gateway server has the exception enabled to allow UDP traffic to the Gateway over port 3391. Now, if you have a larger RDS environment running in high availability mode with multiple gateways and brokers, you have a few more steps to get UDP flowing smoothly. You'll want to perform the same steps we just did on your individual gateways to make sure they'll deal with UDP traffic on port 3391, but you'll also need to configure your load balancers to handle UDP, and this is where it can get a bit tricky. In my lab environment, I have a Kemp Loadmaster virtual appliance running on Hyper-V. I'm biased. I love Kemp, and I think they make the best load balancers for remote desktop environments. They make rack-mounted hardware appliances, plus virtual appliances that work in Hyper-V and in Azure. Plus, if you want to try them out, they make a free version that's limited to 20 megabits per second of traffic. All that said, the principles I'm going to discuss here will be fairly common to most load balancers in general. So on my Kemp, I've created two virtual services that share the same VIP, but that listen on different ports. The TCP port is set to 443, and the UDP port is set to 3391. Both are working over Layer 7. I like using Layer 7 because it allows me to turn on transparency, which means I actually see the global IP address of who's logging in to my gateways, as opposed to just the IP address of my load balancer. This is key if you want to have a better handle on security, and our Remote Desktop Commander Suite software can report on and geolocate your client connections if you have everything set to Layer 7 with transparency. Let's examine how I configured the TCP443 VIP. I turned on transparency for the aforementioned reasons. My persistence option, some load balancers call persistence affinity, it's the same thing, are set to source IP address. For RDP gateway connections, 
you have to use source IP affinity or persistence because each TCP or UDP connection, be it 443 or 3391, needs to stay bound to one gateway. That said, one gateway in the pair can be handling the UDP connection and the other gateway can be handling the TCP connection. That works fine. I have SSL acceleration disabled because that doesn't work using layer 7. Finally, I check that my gateways are responding over port 443 by querying the RPC URL and I set my forwarding method to NAT. On the UDP 3391 VIP, the configuration is simpler. I have transparency enabled. I use source IP persistent slash affinity. I check that the gateway is up using a simple ICMP ping. And I make sure my forwarding method is NAT here as well. In huge RDS environments where you're running applications that use a lot of UDP bandwidth, such as CAD CAM software, you may wish to set up the UDP channel to use direct server return for the forwarding method, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Now the last thing I did to get UDP flowing through my load balancer and high availability remote desktop gateways properly was to set the default gateway on the NIC of both of my remote desktop gateways to the internal IP address of my Kemp load balancer. This was essential as I selected the NAT forwarding method for UDP traffic on the Kemp, and so the UDP return traffic has to flow back through the load balancer to work properly. Once you think you have everything configured to allow UDP to be used with the RDP protocol, the next step is to verify that UDP is in fact being used. You could contact a bunch of your users and have them look at the ribbon bar on the top of their MSTSC client to see if the client shows UDP enabled, but good luck chasing them down. The faster way is to download our free Remote Desktop Commander Lite client and use it to see if UDP is working. You can also use it for tons of other session management tasks, such as logging off hung sessions, messaging users, managing grade mode, etc. As a bonus, it's a much faster tool than the built-in RDS manager that ships with Microsoft Server Manager. Once you install Remote Desktop Commander Lite, go to the Edit menu and either add one of your connection brokers or specify your terminal servers manually in a group if you don't use a broker. Then, right mouse click on one or more of your active user sessions you want to examine and select View Protocol Data. The resulting dialog will show you if the user's session is using TCP transport only or if it's using TCP and UDP transport. While you're here, you can observe lots of other cool metrics like the network latency of the client's session to the server, the user input delay in the session, which might point to an app misconfiguration or something else slowing down app responsiveness, and the network loss and retransmission rates. Hi there! If you'd like me to make more of this content, please do one of the following. First, like this video and click the notification bell below to subscribe to the RDP Hard channel. Second, download my company's free Remote Desktop Commander Lite tool to help you manage sessions on your RDS and AVD farms. It's more powerful and much faster than the built-in RDS manager. Third, consider purchasing my RDP own book on how to secure your RDS environments. It's only $9.99 on Amazon Kindle. Fourth, start a subscription to one or more of my company's commercial RDS and ABT monitoring and management tools. We offer very affordable monthly subscriptions you can use for as little or as long as you need. I think you'll find we deliver more value than just about any other RDS monitoring tool in the marketplace. Thank you. See you on my next video.